In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray that we all respect the dignity of human life from conception until natural death, for the times in which we fail to be people who choose life. We pause and ask our Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we whom you have made stewards of creation may remain faithful to the sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, now our high priest has obtained so much more excellent a ministry as he is mediator of a better covenant enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, no place would have been sought for a second one. But he finds fault with them and says, Behold, The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will conclude a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they did not stand by my covenant, and I ignored them, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds. And I will write them upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each one his fellow citizen and kin, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from least to greatest. For I will forgive their evil doing, and remember their sins no more. When he speaks of a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete. And what has become obsolete and has grown old is close to disappearing. The word of the Lord. Kindness and truth shall meet. Kindness and truth shall meet. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Kindness and truth shall meet. The Lord himself will give his benefits Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Kindness and truth shall meet.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, who he named Boedrenes, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. There are days on our calendars that are etched in our memories, that we don't even have to open up the calendar. When the day arrives, we know exactly what the day is all about because, uh, well, we celebrate it. If I tell you December 25th, you know what day that is, right? It's Christmas, of course. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. January 1st, what day is it? And it's New Year's Day. You, you know, it's the time that we uh, leave the old things behind and begin something new. August 24th, you know that one too, right? It's the Pather's birthday, so you better get to the program, okay? It's a day to celebrate, right? It's a wonderful day when the earth stopped and, and everything changed. Uh, but then there are those other days too, that if I tell you the day, it'll bring about a memory. You could probably even tell me where you were if you were alive, uh, but it really doesn't bring such wonderful celebratory connotations to it. If I say September 11th, for example... Everybody remembers that particular day because it's the day that our nation was under terrorist attack from the outside. You could probably remember exactly where you were and what you were doing. I was planning the first Abbey Youth Festival over at St. Joseph Seminary as I was over at the Seminary College at the time. Uh, if I actually mention the day December 7th, some of you might remember that day too, the day that will live in infamy, right? The day that the United States was attacked by Japanese forces and we were suddenly hurtled into World War II. Uh, August 6th, I think it was, is another day. That one might be a little less clear, but it's the day that the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and so, sort of ended the conflict, if you will, between the United States and Japan and World War II. But this day, today, should also stand out in our minds as well. It's January 22nd, I believe it is. And today in the church, we pray for the unborn, but it's an infamous day in our country because it's the day in which our Supreme Court legalized abortion in the United States in the infamous Roe versus Wade decision. Now, in each of those particular episodes, you could see the cost, the casualty of human life. September 11th, I think 2,500 Americans lost their life between Washington and New York and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Uh, 2,500 people lost their life when Japan attacked the United States in that, that early Pearl Harbor attack. Over 120,000 Japanese lost their life when we dropped the atomic bomb on their city. And now we can't even count sometimes the numbers because there's such huge numbers of young children that have actually been slaughtered and sacrificed because of the legalese that happens in our country. So what does today actually pause us to stop and do? Well, I think it asks us to look and, and simply ask the question, are we a people of life? And what does that really look like for each and every one of us? Uh, we find ourselves getting out of that heavy-duty political season. We're scratching our heads about, uh, is the right person in office? Or are they going to enshrine these particular principles that we value as a Christian nation? But instead of us paying so much attention to the national scene, I think we have to pay attention to the local scene, and especially what goes on in our hearts, so that we can change the tide internally and here in our own grassroots level, and then hopefully begin to exact change. What does the church invite us to do today? Well, the first thing that it does is to simply pray. Uh, pray in repentance for all the sins that have been committed within the context of our country. But even thinking internally, though we may have not been persons uh, that have supported abortion ourselves or, or known someone that has done it and actually pat them on the back, God forbid, uh, you and I also have to ask ourselves, 
are we a people of life? What are the things that we do each and every day of our faith journey that support and promote the dignity of life or actually retract from it? I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, you turn on the television nowadays, it's full of garbage, right? That's why I don't watch television all that much. But if you think about how we show family values in the midst of television, it's really backwards, and it really doesn't show our support of the dignity of all human life. Uh, I used to remember my nephew wanted to watch Family Guy. You ever seen it before? It's a little cartoon. It's got some humor sometimes that if you think about culture, it's actually pretty funny. But then there's some stuff in there that is, oh my goodness, absolutely crazy. Uh, don't even pay attention to that stuff. Pay attention to the plot line. You know what the plot line is? Well, for one, there is a baby whose one sole purpose in life is to try to kill his mother. Family values, that's what we put on television. Uh, you can start to see in even our television series uh, the demonstration that we don't really support life as a culture. And independently, you and I will sometimes click it on and say, oh, I'm going to watch it, that's insignificant, nobody's going to really say anything, but what it's doing is actually instilling in us and instilling in our family uh, sort of a culture of anti-life. So maybe one of the concrete things that we could do is look in our own journey of faith and say, are we pro-life people or, or are we not? Do we support the dignity of human life? If you want to change that, watch the words that you use in your household, what you call each other, how you dignify each other in words, but also in actions. So the church says, pray and do something internally. But then we also have the national scene. Now, we could always go to the voting box and do what we want to do, and, and hopefully that can make a change. But let's face it, even though we're called to go out and do that, that's part of our, uh, our allegiance as citizens that we really have to do, uh, there are things on a national scene we simply can't change. Uh, we're not members of the Supreme Court, so we're not going to necessarily overturn that particular law ourselves. What we are invited to do, though, I think, is to find new and creative ways to promote that culture, even within the context of our society. Leave it to lawyers, things never get done, right? Uh, one of our bishops used to say, if you ask two canon lawyers an opinion, you get three opinions. Uh, that, that's what happens in the legal system. So instead of us spending all of our time and resources advocating and fighting for that, which is important, we need to pray for the repeal of the law in our country, I think the other things that we should do, though, is work continually on our grassroots level here and now to see what can be done to exact change. People got very frustrated with St. Augustine. When he was the Bishop of Hippo, I believe they legalized prostitution in Hippo. And people were very angry at him because he didn't come out right and say over and over and over again, it's wrong, don't do it. So somebody confronted him one day and said, Augustine, why, why aren't you speaking out uh, more vehemently against this? And Augustine said, well, we all know it's wrong, but instead of repealing the law, maybe we should let the law fall out of place because of disusitude. In other words, change minds and hearts so that people don't even consider that. And maybe we should do that in our own journey of faith, too. What do we do to promote that dignity of life in our society and country? We do some little things here. We always have the baby bottle campaign, right? But it's one of those ways that we support a ministry that tells other people, you know, there are many other choices out there than abortion. There are all other kinds of things that you could choose. Adoption. Lots of people would love to have the child that you yourself might not be able to support or might not want right now. And if we do those small things and begin to shift and change the culture a little bit, perhaps we will show how dignified human life is for us and for all of us in our community and within the context of our society. And of course, the sky's the limit. To be creative, to become advocates every single day to show that we promote life. And on this day, we pray for the unborn too, but we have to remember there are other people that don't actually have the dignity of their life shown them constantly, whether they be prisoners, uh, whether they be persons who are at the end stages of their life. We have to remember that the protection of human life starts before birth in the womb, but it ends upon our death, and it encompasses anybody and everybody in between. Are we advocates for getting rid of all of those other things in our society that really show that we're not protecting 
all of God's creation. We're not being the stewards that God has called us to be of something so delicate and so precious that's here today and gone tomorrow. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, there's much work to be done. We're called to be prayer advocates. We're called to go out and try to get people in our Congress who are going to change that law, or if not, to try to be advocates that the law eventually will be repealed. But I think the onus is on us to actually become a people who respect life. And it all begins in those subtle shifts, those little changes, even within our families, even within our homes, and in the programs and things that we support that let those laws, no matter how terrible they may be, simply fall out of disuse because they're not important to us. We want to promote all of God's life, conception until natural death. We pray for it today, but we're called to be a people of action. What will you do to show that you support all of God's creation, especially the great gift of human life? We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. We continue to pray that the Roe v. Wade decision enacted by our Supreme Court may be overturned so that as a country we might reinstill the value of protection of human life. We pray to the Lord that we might be advocates for societal change each and every day of our journey of faith. We pray to the Lord that we become advocates of change by protecting our family and dignifying those who live with us. We pray to the Lord for the programs in our country and within our own communities that constantly show others there are alternatives to considering abortion. We pray to the Lord for those who have died and gone before us marked with the sign of faith and for the many victims of abortion in our country, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers of petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. May we be a light to the nations, O God, as we constantly go out and speak the truth in the context of the darkness of our world. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, your duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for the children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you." In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.